This is the Black River. And the mountain on the banks of the Black River that you can see right there, that's Hawks Mountain. Hawks Mountain is named after Colonel John Hawks, who in 1759 was trying to find a path through the Green Mountains of Vermont and making the road known, known as the Crown Point Road. Colonel Hawks was following the path then known as the Indian Road. Hawks wasn't the first person to cross this path. There was another man in 1730 named James Cross. Cross also was trying to find a passage through the Green Mountains by following the old Indian Road. Luckily, Cross had a journal. And in his journal, he mentioned that he left, he crossed the Black River, leaving behind a great mountain on the right and on the left of the river. This location right here is the tail end of Pox Mountain, and on the other side of the river, the tail end of Eagle Mountain. And I believe this is the path that Cross took in 1730 while exploring the Old Indian Road. As you can see, there's stonework lining the river that does not serve any colonial functions. And you got that right there. A piece of place quartz, very common for Native American stone constructions. And further up here, you'll see why I believe that cross took this path because there is a old, old trail up here that is lined with stone. At the beginning of it, there is a possible serpent. And as you can see, the landscape is mountainous and rocky. Not the type of terrain that you would usually expect to find stonework on. The only kind of stonework on here, on this mountain, is lining a trail. Which is right up, right up here. And you can see a wild, wild path right here, wild travel path, but no one's been over here in a very long time. And here's the beginning of that path. There's a stone wall with place stones on it. That could be a serpent FNG to begin the trail up the mountain and this again hawks went over this mountain because he was following the old indian road cross also went over the mountain by following the old indian road leaving behind a great mountain on the right and a great mountain on the left crossing the black river this location of the black river is the most shallow spot from for a few miles, really. Below here, it gets a little deeper, more rapid, but above, very shallow, easy to cross as well. A lot of places to enter into the river because further down, you get closer to the mountain, the, both mountains, and the shoreline is very steep and rugged. Walk up here for a little bit to give you an idea of the stonework that is on the side of this mountain. You see the stonework, the stones in the wall itself are massive. And this isn't the first kind of stonework like this in the area. I found other areas that have stonework 
going up a mountain that has a trail right next to it. It's kind of a common feature in the area, but when they were making the Crown Point Road, and this is the Crown Point Road is based off the old Indian Road, the Crown Point Road did not use stone. The British did not use stone. They used logs. Whenever they had across a swampy area, they used logs. They did not use stone. But there's many records of Native Americans using stone in the construction of, say, forts, walls, stone prayer piles, serpent effigies, turtle effigies. And this trail goes all the way up the mountain. I have not been to the top of it because it goes up and over the whole entire mountain. And that is a hike that I am not prepared to do today. But I believe this is the old Indian road that both men in the 1700s followed. And who knows how many Abenaki people used this path in the 12,000 years that they lived here prior to European contact and dying off by diseases.